In 2008, we travelled to Paraguay and shot these images with Julio Rotello. Despite having committed no crime, he had spent the last 15 years of his young life behind bars, often in solitary confinement. They were some of the most disturbing scenes I had ever witnessed. We also met Jorge Bernal, close in age to Julio and sharing a similar, little understood disability. For several years, they were incarcerated side by side in the state psychiatric institution. Both young men have a severe form of autism, an intellectual disability, and they both suffered at the hands of a society that failed to understand and to protect them, which locked them behind bars, treating them with fear rather than compassion. But their stories began some three decades earlier. Abandoned as a baby, Julio's grandmother was left to raise the severely mentally disabled two-year-old. Alone and struggling to cope, she resorted to tying Julio to a tree to keep him from escaping. At seven years old, Julio was taken away from her with no other facilities available in this, one of the poorest countries in Latin America, he was put into the state's only psychiatric hospital in the capital, Asuncion. At first, funds were set aside for his individual care by a dedicated nurse, as seen in this footage shot at that time. He was a very quiet He was a very hyperactive boy. Lloraba, gritaba, rompía todo lo que encontraba, se pegaba por la pared. Cuando él se arrinconaba y lloraba y gritaba, vení Juli, vení acá mi bebé. Yo siempre le decía, vení Julito en mi brazo, vení acá. Y venía y se apoyaba en mi falda, ponía su cabeza ahí y se calmaba. Yo le tocaba la cabecita y le mimaba y se calmaba. Estaba, estábamos ahí horas y horas. For a year, she looked after just him. Me miraba en la cara y más. When the funding ran out, everything changed. He was taken from Lucilla and put into the men's section, where, for his own safety, he was locked up alone. Jorge Bernal's story began in another poor household in Asuncion. As an autistic child, he was always running away from home, receiving no help for his care. When his young mother gave birth to her sixth child, she struggled to manage him. Yo tenía mi bebé, Natalia era bebé. Y muchas veces le tenía que dejar tirada a la bebé para ir a buscarle a él. Ponerle a veces a las 5 de la mañana, las 12 de la noche. In desperation, she turned to the authorities. The only solution, they told her, was to put Jorge in the institution. In 1996, 12-year-old Jorge was also admitted to the neuropsychiatric hospital and put in the cell next to Julio. For 23 hours a day, they were locked away alone in filthy, cramped cells, neighbors in their isolation. Y yo les decía, ¿y por qué? ¿Por qué le encierran? Cuando más le encierran, va a ser peor. 
This is where human rights lawyer Alison Hillman found them in 2003. She shot this footage of them. They slept and ate and resided in the very same space that they defecated and urinated. They were taken out of their cells to be hosed off. And when you have a locked institution, whether it's an orphanage or a psychiatric hospital or a prison ward, you find abuse, neglect, children tied to beds. When people are locked away from, from society, they're really invisible. In response to Alison's unveiling of the violations being committed and a subsequent ruling by the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, the conditions in the state-run psychiatric hospital improved slightly. And in 2008, Paraguay ratified the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, the Republic of Paraguay, which recognizes the right of everyone to live in dignity. A few weeks later, I went to Paraguay with Alison to see what had changed in Jorge and Julio's lives. Julio had been moved to a separate space in the institution for autistic boys. This cell is a bit larger, it's, it's a bit cleaner, and he does have access to a bathroom, but I'm, I don't believe that he has learned how to use it. Julio, vení, vení. That's what the international conventions stipulate, that people with disabilities have the right to be in the community and to receive the services and supports that they need to live in the community. I think that at this point there is will on the part of the government to change Julio's conditions and, and to get him perhaps into a, into a substitute family-like setting. Um, but I think mostly it's been a lack of resources and a, and a lack of knowing what to do. In 2008, Jorge's life had, in contrast, taken a different path. His nine-year stay in the institution had ended a year earlier. Because Blasida had found a cleaner's job and her other children were now older, she was finally able to take him back home. I felt very well because it was like something again. I always lived with a guilt de tener un hijo allá y volvió y para mí y para mí era lo máximo. Jorge found himself at the center of a doting family and blossomed, relearning the social skills he lost during his years in isolation. As this footage shows. De bote, de bote. In 2016, we went back to Paraguay for an update on Julio and Jorge's parallel lives. Jorge, now 30, was still living with his family. Él es prioridad. Yo siempre agradezco la suerte que tengo de que tengo muchos hijos. Porque ellos ellos me ayudan en todo para cuidar a Jorge. There is still no state financial or social help at all for families with a disabled member. So Blasida's children share the responsibility for Jorge's care with their mother. Now 
Natalia, now 19, explains when she is able to go to school. Viernes de noche, sábado al mediodía y domingo a la mañana. Los otros días no voy a poder porque le voy a tener que cuidar a Jorge, sí o sí. Hace ese sacrificio, por así decirlo, ¿verdad? Para, que, para quedarse con él. Y ella es la que más le entiende, o sea, totalmente. While Natalia is with Jorge, Blasida earns the money for the family. As in 2008, she still works as a cleaner in the same institution where her son and Julio were once locked up. Me contrataron como una ayuda para cuidarle a mi hijo, para que no le falte comida y todas esas cosas. And she's more grateful now than ever to have a job. Hace un año desarrolló una enfermedad que es la diabetes por consecuencia de uno de los medicamentos que estaba consumiendo para su para su cuadro. Al comienzo para nosotros fue muy difícil porque él empezó a cambiar de humor, no dormía, eh, muchas veces lloraba y nosotros no sabíamos por qué. Casi un año pasamos así. Hasta que un doctor eh, me dijo, vamos a probarle este medicamento. Y yo pago lo que, lo que él toma, los medicamentos que él toma. Porque eh, el Estado no tiene un programa para él. Finding a better paid job would certainly help. And Blasida feels she could do more than just clean the floors. And now, thanks largely to years sharing her life with Jorge, she has a plan for their future. I'm studying psychology. I decided that because I like it, and. In my case, I'm more with Jorge, and also understand him more. He also teaches me a lot of things, and the study is more to give him a life and to give him a better life. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Life has already taken a turn for the better. Bueno, este es un hogar sustituto y tiene una función en tránsito. Algunos, algunos usuarios encontraron familiares y volvieron a sus casas. En esta casa específica no. Y soy médico psiquiatra, soy psicoterapeuta y estoy trabajando en el área de los hogares sustitutos eh, por la Dirección de Salud Mental. A Julio lo conozco desde el 2003 aproximadamente. No, no tenía una relación directa, pero sabía que él estaba internado junto con Jorge. Julio está mejor de cuando estaba en el hospital, ¿verdad? Él, él tiene visión de horizonte acá. En el hospital tenía visión fragmentada por las rejas. Tiene libertad para salir y caminar. En el hospital su espacio era mucho más pequeño. Y él tenía una, una conducta así, de, de romper telas que era una manera de expresar quizás su angustia, su enojo. Qué rabia tengo, qué impotencia. 
fue como un, como un niño atrapado en un laberinto. En este momento él siente vínculos, saluda, mira los ojos y puede mantener la ropa íntegra, mantener un, un patrón conductual donde hay hora de dormir, hora de jugar, hora de comer. Él ya no rompe, juega, juega con la tela como un objeto intermediario de la comunicación donde él parece decir aquí yo estoy lo que se rescata de esto es el vínculo que tiene con sus compañeros entonces uno puede decir esta es la familia de Julio y muchos de ellos se hicieron cargo de los vínculos de él y uno dice, pero son personas enfermas que hacen vínculos. Pero si uno no mira el, el, la enfermedad, lo que rescata es el vínculo, el acercamiento. Es como el, el niño de la familia, el más chico, el más indefenso. But Julio's is one case. Is enough being done? Hay muchos más, hay muchos invisibles dentro de esta problemática. No existen porque está invisibilizado. Es un tipo de violencia social. Por un lado, el estigma de los padres que traen al mundo un hijo defectuoso, y por, y por otro lado. La, la negación del estado de que eso existe. According to the United Nations appointed independent expert who visited Paraguay in 2015, progress has been made, but there are still many gaps. There are no support services in Paraguay for children or in general for persons with intellectual disabilities. Autistic children are being absolutely discriminated. They face enormous um, and grave violations of their rights, uh, and even in the most developed countries. So I couldn't say that Paraguay is a unique case. In most cases happens is that they have no resources and, and adequate support services, so they might end up uh, locked up in a, in a psychiatric facility, uh, which is totally unacceptable. El, el tema es siempre el presupuesto. No hay específicamente una ley de salud mental. La idea de que haya una ley de salud mental es el hecho de que se tendría que poner un presupuesto. Yo pienso que acá todavía en nuestro país es, hay una política de inversión hospitalaria como una manera de tratar la salud. No en los otros aspectos ni preventivos ni de rehabilitación. Eso todavía no está desarrollado fuertemente. The medical director at the psychiatric hospital disagrees. There have been advances, he says. We have a department of rehabilitation for our patients where they do art, crosswork, they do physical activities. They're also now having a place to plant. We emphasize their rehabilitation. Our objective is in the long term that our long stay patients be in a house, not in the hospital, not behind bars, somewhere comfortable, somewhere where they are able to uh, develop their abilities. The situation has changed, but it still is not adequate. Uh, a lot of people are there detained in the psychiatric hospital, um, despite the efforts uh, by the local authorities and by the uh, staff in the hospital. The conditions remain uh, very dramatic in the hospital. Although Julio's cell now lies empty of inmates, some 150 patients in the hospital are still awaiting their chance of a different life. And Dr. Moreno feels Julio's life could have been transformed 
had his needs been recognized earlier. Si él se hubiese, si se hubiese sistematizado ¿no? ya por el 2003, un modelo así de, de trabajo más integral y continuado, ¿no? pero fuera del hospital, él quizás iba a tener otra oportunidad. No digo que se iba a curar, pero iba a tener mejor funcionalidad. Placida feels Jorge would also have benefited from different treatment as a child. Él de, de muy niño, a los dos o tres años, balbuceaba algunas palabras. Y después fue perdido. Pero tampoco conocíamos nada, no había ningún centro. Nada. Y ayuda mucho menos. Yo creo que si el Estado hubiera ayudado, ¿verdad? se hubiera hecho muchas cosas. No hubiéramos pasado tantas cosas que pasamos. Se hubiera ahorrado tantos años de internación. Y las cosas hubieran sido diferentes. Jorge's future now rests solely in his family's hands. As long as they are able and willing to look after him, his care is assured. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dr. Moreno sums up what lies ahead for Julio. Él es un hijo del Estado. Yo creo que en el futuro se le va a cuidar a él hasta el fin de sus días. Pero él, él está acá ya se bien arraigado. Disability is a normal part of human diversity and we should just deal on the social factors that allow the interaction of those people on equal basis with others. How to make sure that we have equal opportunities to participate and how to accommodate a society that was designed for people without disabilities and that's our fight. The story of Julio and Jorge shows that, though the struggle continues, with support and respect, there is hope. <laughs>